And we're all familiar with this story, the Enterprise of Florida, 1565, and I always put this slide up giving a talk because this still remains, this book by Eugene Lyon, the basis for most of what we know about that encounter and, and what happened in those few years. So I really recommend it if you, if you haven't read it yet. But as noted, uh, Menendez, Ponce de Leon, none of these explorers walked into an empty space. Uh, in this particular area where, where St. Augustine is today in Jacksonville, this area was uh, one of the groups Jerry Milanich told us about us earlier today, uh, one of the uh, Tumukwa tribal confederacies. And Tumukwa really refers to a language group, people who speak uh, the same language. But it was made up of a number of different tribes, at least seven different dialects and and groups, and the, and the people who were here in St. Augustine and along our coast were the saltwater Tumuqua in this area. And uh, they're a very interesting group, and believe it or not, even though people have been digging here and doing research here for more than half a century, very, very little is known about the daily life of the Tumuqua and what they were actually doing when Europeans arrived. We have no historical accounts of that moment and later, but Really, most of the archaeological works told us about how people were buried. The burial mounds have been excavated. And the work at, at, in St. Augustine, in the Menendez site area, is really the first village site of the Tumuqua people that's been extensively excavated. Uh, so we're going to go there first and then uh, on to pay for Menendez. Now, my colleague, I don't see him there, he's frowning in the back probably, Jerry, who has really studied this, he's really looked into this, does not believe in these images. And many of you probably are familiar with this image as part of the, uh, a set of engravings done by Theodore de Brie in the late 16th century in London. And they were based on paintings that were done by a French artist, Jacques Lemoyne, who was at uh, Fort Caroline, near Jacksonville, part of the Ladonier expedition. Uh, Debris also did engravings of early explorers and painters all over the Americas, and uh, it's thought by many scholars that these are really kind of made up by Debris, and that he, he mixed and matched things from Brazil, and from the Caribbean, and from Florida. So take these images, I do use them because they are the only ones we have. Of Florida, but you should always take these with a bucket of salt um, and, and a little um, uh, suspicion. Although it's true that Michelangelo never saw David. <laughs> we have a, a very good idea of uh, uh, what our ideal is <laughs> from that. So think of these in, in that way. So I, I, Jerry's here. I just wanted to make that, that caveat. But this is supposedly an image of the cacique, the paramount chief of the saltwater Tumuqua at the time Europeans arrived, Satariwa, whose principal town, his capital, was uh, close to Jacksonville at the mouth of the St. John's River. And he allowed the French to come into his territory. Uh, the the Tumuqua here were a very highly stratified, hierarchical kind of society. There were chiefs, inherited chiefdoms who had uh, the power of gods, uh, and it was a very um, complex political and religious organization, the Tumuqua. Uh, they, they weren't just barbarians as the Spanish or uh, would the early accounts might, might have, have suggested. But uh, these images of the Tumuqua might be a little more accurate. These are, were painted by uh, John White, an English painter who came with Richard Grenville to Roanoke, and he had stopped, they had stopped in Florida. Some people think these may have been painted as a consequence of that stop in the 1580s, and others think that this is one of the few direct copies from a Jacques Lemoyne painting, but nevertheless, this may be how uh, the original inhabitants of, of where we are now actually, actually looked. The French were uh, the first people to try and settle in the domain of the Tumuqua. Uh, Jerry showed us this image um, 
the Rebow Column. Uh, and they established Fort Caroline in Jacksonville. This is an actual drawing of a person who was at Fort Caroline of the fort, made in 1564. And the, the Tamuqua, Satariwa in particular, was very canny about this idea of Europeans arriving. And he quickly tried to organize them so that they would be allies with their guns uh, against other Tamuqua confederacies, these various tribal groups, the Patano, the Mokama, the Saltwater, the Freshwater Tamuqua, the Utina, these were all groups of Tamuqua, and they were always warring over uh, land, territory, and we really don't know what else. But Satariwa enlisted the French to uh, help him in uh, vanquishing his enemies, in particular the Utina. And this is another one of those debris drawings. He has actually it backwards. Here's Satariwa with his troops and Utina here, but he's got the Spaniards on the side of Utina. It should have been the other way around. But that's what Menendez <laughs> stepped into, this already um, manipulative relationship between the French and, and the Timucua. Uh, of course, in September 8, 1565, the expedition arrived in St. Augustine. We've heard over the last day many discussions of that. I know most of you are familiar with this story, and um, I'm not going to go into detail. I'll tell you at the end of a website if you would like to go into more detail. Uh, but they did arrive at St. Augustine really because of where Fort Caroline was more than anything else. The very few accounts of that first settlement exist, just a few accounts that say we went on shore, we dug some trenches to protect the goods while we looked around for a site for a proper fort, a proper settlement. Uh, so it is known that they settled on the water at or near a Tamuqua town. Now, at that time here around St. Augustine, it would be hard to not settle at or near the water around a Tamuqua town. These, by the way, are, uh, this was reconstructions that were done in the 1970s by the St. Augustine Foundation for the film some of you probably have seen at the Visitor Information Center, Struggle to Survive. A number of us worked on that film, and, and these are happy Tamuqua guys. Um, <laughs> They let their tan line show. They made all the <laughs> Tamuqua women had to wear halters, which wasn't uh, interpretively authentic. But uh, they burned the whole, they built a whole St. Augustine, a whole Tamuqua village, and burned it as a scene in the movie. So you should go see it if you, you get a chance. This shows you where Indian towns were here, just in this uh, particular area. Here's the, the board and the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind. This is just this section of St. Augustine. And all of these areas are where archeologists here have um, located Native American settlements. And there was a long stretch of Tamuqua occupation all along the intercoastal waterway stretching from the fort farther north than has really been surveyed. Oh, and so, our work has concentrated in this particular area around the mission of Nombre de Dios and the Fountain View Park here. Uh, these, this was the only area in the survey that had both Tamuqua village and occupation and 16th century artifacts. And this is a, a, a very rough estimate based on corings and uh, GIS map analysis of, of how much the shorelines changed since probably the 19th century. We have no idea how much it changed since uh, the 16th century. But here you have what's today the Mission of Nombre de Dios and the La Leche Shrine. Here's the Fountain of Youth Park area. This area is really unknown. Um, it's been probably dredged, altered by hurricanes. So, uh, but we do know that the Menendez era artifacts and material are concentrated just in this area. It's, it's very uh, precisely shown from all kinds of corings and excavation. But I just showed you this to keep in mind first, this is a funny kind of pointed shape of the land. And then at the mission, this round tree shape. The rest of them will be straight down areas. 
to show you the extent of the excavations that have taken place at the Fountain of Youth Park, it's a really um, way more than archaeologists usually want to excavate. We'd much rather not excavate. But it's been such a, a puzzle. We've often said it's a giant crossword puzzle, or excuse me, a jigsaw puzzle, with a thousand pieces and no picture to go by because you didn't, you didn't really know what exactly this was supposed to look like. So this is just a sense of, here's Hospital Creek, where excavations were. Uh, one of the first things that became apparent after doing various kinds of magnetic surveys and contour mapping was that this is, here again, is Hospital Creek. The mission is right over here. There is a, a shell midden, a buildup of, of refuse from uh, kitchen and life activities, extending around the edge. Uh, the dates, it dates predominantly between 1000 AD and about AD 1650, although there, are, there was occupation as back, far back as um, 2,500 years ago. In the center is a very low, shell-free, sandy area, which interestingly was used as a cleared plaza both by the Tumqua and by the Spaniards, uh, which is kind of interesting. So the whole site, I'm not going to go through all this, does, it has that whole range based on a lot of radiocarbon and AMS dates. Uh, the, the two most dominant occupations there are the mission, the St. John's Tumuqua period, which is what the village really dates from, and the Menendez era, which is where we've tried to focus most of our work. This I just put in because it's the very earliest thing at this site. We have two... Um, a charcoal and a, a shell carbon date on this, and it, it date is about between 800 and 400 BC. You can see that it's a post in a pit. And this whole layer had not a single artifact, not a single bone. So it may actually be pre-ceramic, but there are there is evidence of human occupation there and all along the coast here from, from that time period. Um, the Tumuqua people, and I think most of you at various places have seen this, uh, built and lived in fairly small circular huts, uh, usually made of thatch or wood, and this is a typical kind of archaeological plan of where the posts are. This is a reconstruction. And uh, interestingly, these are from other sites, not just the Fountain of Youth Park, now Carl Halbert's work and uh, various um, CRM companies' work has found similar, I'm doing this, similar uh, patterns. And most of these are about three meters, four meters in diameter, about eight to 12 feet in diameter, which isn't that big. But there are a lot of these structures now uncovered archaeologically. And this is, these are various ideas of what these would have looked like. I, wanted, I know some of you have seen this, but it's an, it, one of the few insights we get into sort of thought process and behavior and ritual of the Tumuqua in their building construction. Uh, this is a typical post mold. It's where a post was in the ground. This one burned, and the uh, original wood rotted away. You're left with a stain in the shape of... Sorry about this. Shape of, of the original post. Well, notice this, this little thing down here. Turned out that that was a very precisely positioned uh, Lafayette point, which is a kind of archaic uh, projectile point that dates to uh, the earliest period, about 500 BC. And so these people, even though we know the post was pulled out close to 1500, it, uh, they had originally found this ancient point and placed it in there sometimes well, maybe as we often do with coins or objects in a foundation cornerstone, but that's a rare kind of insight that, that more work into the Tumuqua might, might help us understand better. Uh, this is where, at, at the Fountain of Youth Park site, we found these thatch structures around the edge of the middens, 